So this is a company that's an AI company that just won a new contract. Is it a good stock? Is it a bad stock? Are you looking for guidance on what to do? Well, if that's the case, you sit right there and we'll get to it. Hello, everybody. My name is Glenn Tompkins, senior instructor here at VectorVest. Always love bringing these videos. So this is a stock that I talked about about a month ago called Palantir. P-L-T-R is the ticker symbol. And I did the video because it had a new contract with an automotive company, and now they got another new contract, and they're already partnering up with other companies as well. And I don't think people realize how many top-line companies this company, Palantir, is aligning themselves with. So, before we get started, uh, I always like to invite you to subscribe to the channel. We would love for you to subscribe to the channel. Comment in the comments. Let me know what you think about the story. All right, with that, let's get into the, the news on Palantir. I will jump right over there. And Palantir is selected by the National Nuclear Security Administration for a five-year, $89.9 million contract for a safer project. That happened on April 5th. Today is the 9th. So I wanted to let the story settle a little bit before I started to come back so that I can give you as much complete information as possible as to what is going on. Now, before we move on, this is just one of several companies that uh, Palantir is aligning itself up with. Listen to this star-studded list of clients. So we've got Foratia, which is automotive company. We also have IBM that they're linking up with, Morgan Stanley, Merck for the drug company, Airbus, Fiat Chrysler, and of course, they initially started out with working with our federal agencies, the CIA and the FBI. And what Palantir does is it takes data from all over the place, and it crunches it up into usable information. They sell you that information, and you can do with it what you want to make it more usable to what you're trying to do. So they are going out as an AI company to get all of this stuff, and what they present to you is usable information. And the last time I did a video on it, I showed the different tiers of their product on how they lay it out. So if you did not go see that video, by all means, please go back to my other first Palantir video. So this is big news. And again, it happened about four days ago, but I wanted the story to settle before I went and did anything with it. So the next story I have, though, this is interesting. The next story I have is the flip side. So this is a, a piece done by somebody on their own, their own insight on it. Palantir won the government contract, but this analyst isn't happy. This is a tip ranks. This is in tip ranks. Um, Palantir is a polarizing name on Wall Street, eliciting a wide array of views from analyst community. Uh, community. Its last or latest contract win did none or did little to convince William Blair's Camille, oh, I'm not saying that last name, uh, that a reassessment is in order. So this is a personal story, their own personal insight. You know something? I put the news out there so that you can make your own decisions and you can go to this website and take a look at it yourself. I'm going to go beyond that, and I'm going to use the power of the VectorVest software to help me to make the right decisions. Now, I will say that this is more of a perception play. AI is still out there. It's still growing, and I'm going to show you other stocks that are in this space as well, but this is new business from the perspective of what Palantir is doing. So that shows me it's got some innovation, and it may be in a niche market, depending on how you look at it. So I've got my own views on it, but I'm going to tell you that this is more of a perception play on what they can do with this kind of uh, information to take it to the next level for more than just these companies that I mentioned. All right, so I couldn't see if this person was short the stock or not. I think that it was not done in a fashion that they were happy with the stock. So I'm going to keep that to myself from that perspective. I just want you to know that this came out. So now, 
Let's move over into the VectorVest software and let's do our own analysis. First thing that I want to do, all right, so we're going to look at Palantir. It's up today. It's 4.9. Actually, I'm going to stream this. Today is 4.9. There it is. It's up another 2% today. There is a reason why it was on 4.5. We're going to get to that in a second. Before I analyze the stock, all right, in the VectorVest fashion, I'm going to show you some more power and flexibility behind the software. I'm going to right click on the stock and I want to see the other stocks that are in this industry group. Simply, I left click on that and it brings up all of the other stocks, all of its other peer stocks in the stocks uh, software security industry. So as I go and I look through here, there's 47 stocks found in this industry. What's at the top of the list? FTNT. I'm going to uh, move this out to 40 stocks. And when I do that, Palantir should show up. There it is, Palantir. And based out of the 47 stocks, it's not in the top. So why are we talking about it? Well, it's not a penny stock, all right? We've been doing some videos on penny stocks. This, by any means, is not a penny stock. The stock is trading at $23.91. Remember, I said this is, was more of a perception play based around, or based around what the stock does and how this can appeal to other companies. But if I'm analyzing it from a vector vest standpoint, uh, Fortinet is at the top of the list trading at 196, a value of 153. It's got great upside potential with relative value at 1.44. This is not a risky stock, relative safety above one. It is in an uptrend. It has a buy recommendation, positive earnings, positive earnings growth rate. So if you like this industry, then maybe this is a better stock to play in this industry. But Fortinet has been around a little longer, right? So what is the whole idea of trying to make money in the market? Buy low, sell high. Is this an opportunity for a company that's got this kind of information or innovation? Could this be an opportunity to buy low? Only you can make that decision as we further analyze the stock. All right, so there's for... Um, um, Palantir, the stock is overvalued. We're going to analyze it in a second. I'm going to do one other thing. Let's talk about the industry that it's in. It is in the software security industry. Let's see where that industry sits in VectorVest. Simply, I go down to the industry viewer within VectorVest. I believe I have it sorted alphabetically. I do, and there it is. It is alphabetically, so I can go find security software. Uh, software security. There it is. Software security. Now, remember, we track 222 industries. Look at where this industry sits. Hmm. Number 213. The industry as a whole is towards the bottom trend level of the industries in VectorVest. This industry is having a hard time making money. And we saw some stocks in there that were good stocks. Something to keep in mind. But this plays a role in helping me to analyze the stock. The stock is in an industry that's struggling based on 222 industries. That's important information. All right, so now we've looked at the other peer stocks in there, uh, in, the, in that space. We looked at the space itself, software security. Folks, this is great information that you can have at your fingertips. I'm going to offer you an opportunity to take advantage of it for 99 cents in a minute. All right, so let's go back to the viewers. We're in the viewers. Let's go back to the watch list viewer. Let's go find out Palantir new contract. All right. And let's now analyze the stock. The stock is trading at $23.91. It's got a value of $3.41. The stock is clearly overvalued. Now, just because a stock is overvalued doesn't make it a bad stock overall, especially with the other analysis that VectorVest provides for you. So the stock is clearly overvalued. Why? Because it is a perception play. A lot of people feel confident about what this stock or company can provide in the future, so people are optimistically buying into it, but it is valued at $3.48. Let's look at the relative value, the stock's upside potential. I'm having trouble hearing you. Wow, Siri, stop, uh, stop that. All right, so the relative value of these stock's upside potential below the value on, of one based on our scaling between zero and two. This stock right now should not outperform the market. Relative safety at 0.87 below the value of one on that scaling between zero and two. Hmm, 
this stock is a little bit more of a riskier stock. Relative timing tells me if the stock is in an uptrend. It's below one on that scaling between zero and two. The stock is not in an uptrend. It is a sell recommendation. But what does catch my attention, the stock does have positive earnings and they're growing their earnings at a clip of 24% a year. Hmm. All right, let's take this a step further. Let's go take a look at a graph. We'll right click, view the stock graph, we'll pull it up. I've got it marked up for you because now this gives you some insight as to what I'm looking at in a stock to help me to make a decision from a technical perspective on what to do. The first thing is I am looking at a stock or looking at this stock from a trade perspective. I did a video on this uh, on March 18th. Uh, since then, the stock's price has fallen to a level of $20.73, which is what I'm going to call my line in the sand. It serves as a good line in the sand. If the stock's price breaks below that, the stock is probably going to have more legs to the downside. But as of right now, it's not doing that. All right, this is for today's video. The contract came out on 4-5 of 2021. All right. As I look at the stock today, open candle, look at where the wick is right at my level of resistance of $24.20, which I derived from right here. That is a good level of current resistance. Because I'm looking at this more so on a trade perspective, I'm using three and eight exponential moving averages. As of yesterday, the three exponential moving average just went above the eight. What I'm looking for now, if I'm not in the stock, I'm looking to see if the stock can break above this level of 2420. And then if that happens, I've got a little level of first profit target level sitting right here at about 24.74. After that, I've got a second profit uh, profit target level sitting at $30.04, which is derived from this level of resistance here. And then after that, if the stock's price goes up, my next profit target will be sitting at $45. So I've got op opportunities to take advantage of it. First off, let it break above this level of resistance. It's a good level of resistance. I've got a current level of support sitting at 22.60, which I derived from this line right here, but my line in the sand is sitting at $20.73. Something else that I'm looking for, relative timing tells me if the stock is in an uptrend or not. Above the value of one, the stock's in an uptrend. Below the value of one, the stock's in a downtrend. I would really like to see RT kick up a little bit. Uh, let me take my picture off for a second so that you can see that as well. Well, now I can't. Don't want to know how. Joey's not here. Sigh, I'll move over a little bit. So I'm waiting for relative timing to get back above the value of one. And volume is pretty steady. I like that. That means there's still interest in the stock because volume is conviction. I'm going to do one other thing. The contract came out on 4.5, right? Let me show you some more power here. I'm going to run this stock as of the close of business on 4.5. All right, the day that they got the contract, the stock's price went up 1.78%. I'm going to quick test it all the way up into right now, which is 4.9 at 2.47 in the afternoon. The stock is up 1.88%. So even with the new contract, the stock is outpacing the market, not by a ton, but it is moving higher. Even though the perception is high, the stock is overvalued, the fundamentals are not there, it could be pushing the stock up nonetheless. That's why I had it at four or five. So with that, folks, you know, I always want you guys to make your own decisions on what you want to do. But I wanted to see from a guidance perspective what the contract really did and if it's really going to help any of you who are holding the stock or any of you who are looking to get into the stock. That's the most important thing. Fundamentally, the stock is not sound. The stock is not going up in price. But perceptionally, this stock could really have some upside, but that's only a decision that you can make. It's only my job to bring the information to you so that you can best use it how you invest in the market. So folks, this video is over. Until the next time, see ya.